right. Welcome everyone to Arts District Creative Conversations with Liberty School. I'm Kate Rubicaba. I work with the NTC Foundation and we're so excited to have you here tonight. I first want to uh, just give a few housekeeping um, items. So first, we will be recording this, so just be aware of that. You're welcome to keep your videos on or um, turn them off, but we do plan to share this uh, through our social media channels as well as our partners um, who are on tonight, uh, so you can look for that to come. And then we do ask that if you have any questions throughout any of the conversation tonight that you just use our chat. So put your questions in there and we'll be sure to get those, um, those answered for you. With that, I am so excited to have this conversation tonight about one of the programs that I'm very passionate about, and that is the NTC Foundation program um, that sponsors Liberty School. Liberty School is a program where we work with our tenants, um, who are our professional teaching artists, and we really try to give back to the community. And so we uh, through a normal, typical year, kids would come over to Liberty Station and uh, the Arts District and they would take art classes from our tenants. This year, we've obviously had to pivot and I will talk more about that um, in a few minutes. But tonight, we have two of our teaching um, organizations with us and four wonderful individuals um, to share more about their organizations what they do as it relates to um, integration with the arts and um, community involvement, and then specifically their involvement with Liberty School. So we have uh, Michael Remsen from San Diego Youth Symphony, as well as Kate Bettenfeld from San Diego Youth Symphony. We have Brooke Newman and Jana McBeath from um, Outside the Lens. So hopefully I said that right, Jana. Uh, <laughs> And with that, um, we are going to get right into it. And I'd like to bring up first um, one of our partners to talk about um, their organization. So Brooke, please tell me more about Outside the Lens. Thank you, Kate. And thank you so much for inviting Outside the Lens to be a part of this conversation this evening. Um, so I'm the program manager with Outside the Lens and Jana is one of our fabulous teaching artists. Um, and our mission at Outside the Lens is to amplify youth voices through photography, filmmaking, and digital media, helping to catalyze change within themselves, their communities, um, and their world. And so um, we have four core program areas. The first one being our cameras in the classroom program, which Liberty School, which we're gonna talk about tonight, is a big part of, and that's really where we're working alongside um, classroom teachers and um, creating projects and curriculum that align with um, what teachers are teaching in the classroom and what um, students are wanting to learn and do more of. Um, and then we also have our cameras in the communities programs where we're working alongside organizations and communities, um, bringing, um, bringing in equipment so that they can tell their own stories. Um, so that's a lot of after school programming and things like that and teacher trainings. And then we also have our cameras and careers program, which Jana's going to speak about tonight also um, with our youth council and youth teller programs where it's a lot of college career readiness. And then we also have some international programs through our cameras and careers, I mean, cam cameras across cultures programs. Wonderful. And we will be putting um, into the chat um, just outside the lens um, website so that you always know uh, how to contact them. But Brooke, thanks so much for that intro. And next, I'd like to invite uh, Michael up to tell us a little bit about San Diego Youth Symphony. Well, great, Kate. Thank you so much. It's a real pleasure and an honor for San Diego Youth Symphony to be here tonight. We're, we're delighted. Uh, I'm the president and CEO here at SDYS, and Kate Battenfeld is my early childhood program manager. Um, our mission is to instill excellence in musical achievement and personal growth for young people through rigorous and inspiring music education experiences. And as I'll talk a little bit about our programs later, but the way one of the reasons we wanted to get so involved with Liberty School is because it 
aligns so much with our strategic vision going forward. Uh, we believe in taking a cradle to college approach uh, to our work with young people. So that means we have programs from, from children all the way from you know, five weeks old all the way through the college uh, age. Uh, we believe in having innovative products that adapt to specific situations, whether we're offering that or we're doing that out in the community. Um, we also want to be a comprehensive arts education provider. So that means having arts experiences, having arts integration programs, and then also having arts instruction through sort of direct musical instruction with kids. And most importantly, we, we want to collaborate and complement the work that so many wonderful organizations are doing here in San Diego. And when we first became a tenant here at the NTC Foundation, which I'll point out was the day Governor Newsom shut us down for the uh, for the pandemic. Uh, but you know, Kate, you and I started talking right away, and I realized that this was a real opportunity for us to extend the important work we do. It was just a really a marriage made in heaven to be able to go and work with schools out in the community like this. So we're we're delighted to be a part of that and share a little bit more about that later. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Michael. We're so happy to have you as a partner, and you're one of our newer partners. So that's what is um, very exciting about this talk tonight is we have kind of outside the lens who's been with us for quite some time and then you as one of our um, our newer uh, partners. So thank you so much. I'm going to talk about Liberty School um, and just give you a little bit more insight um, to the program and give you just kind of a glimpse into what we do and why I am so passionate about it. So Liberty School was started back in 2007. And so for the past 14 years, it has been a gift that we as the NTC Foundation have provided out in the community. And Liberty School began for two, um, two reasons. We had two goals in mind. And one was that we wanted to expose the community and specifically children to the arts and expose them to a variety of different forms of art. And secondly, we wanted to work with our tenants um, to help them give back in that same manner. And so the essence of Liberty School is children coming over prior to COVID uh, during their school day and taking classes here in the arts district. And so children take classes um, for a session at a time and they are exposed to music, dance, fine art, just a variety of different art forms. And that's what makes our program so unique and so special is that the variety of tenants that we have and our professional teaching artists that teach these students, they come from all different mediums. And with that, kids can, can see kind of what they like. And so some kid may hate dance, but they may love the music class. And so it's not intended for them to master, but for them rather to become exposed uh, to what what different fields there are in the arts, um, what different types of arts there are. I don't think all kids understand um, how the arts are part of all different um, aspects and, and what's all included. And so that's really our goal is to show them that exposure um, to get them out of their classrooms, visiting professionals um, in their place of work, seeing that it can be a career, and then also really working from an art integration aspect to help kids understand how math and science and geography and all of the subjects that maybe they enjoy some but not others, um, have them kind of see it in a new light. And so all of our teaching artists look at what the students um, are working on and what their core standards are. And then they work that into their teaching instruction. And so it's really about bringing the children, taking them out of their classroom, giving them those same um, skills that they're learning in the classroom, but in a different way. And so we really want to make learning fun. We want to help uh, increase uh, their self-esteem and help them overall do better in school. And so with that, we currently are serving three elementary schools. We work with students that um, are in a more high-risk uh, population. They may be military. They may be a Title I school. 
They may be homeless, um, free and reduced lunch. So we really try to include those students that otherwise maybe wouldn't be exposed and especially wouldn't be able to come over to, to Liberty School or Liberty Station, excuse me, and experience the arts. So with COVID, we obviously had to pivot like everyone did. And with that pivot, uh, we, we went virtual like the rest of the world. And so we were able to, uh, with our wonderful teaching um, partners, we were able to make kits where kids, um, we dropped them off at the school and parents picked them up and kids would log on and they would go through their instruction that way. So um, that is how we handled things uh, when the pandemic started and through um, last year, this year, the kids are back in the classroom. So right now our teaching artists are um, virtually going on kind of the big screen or their individual computers um, in the screen still with those kits. Um, so kids are still doing all the hands-on um, activities that they always have. We are so excited for um, the future where we can bring the kids back to the arts district because we obviously are not accomplishing all of our goals, um, but we are doing everything we can given you know, the times that we are in. So with the 600 plus kids that we um, serve annually at this point, we feel like we're really making an impact um, into that that arts integration and exposure to the arts, um, but it only could be done with the help of um, all of our tenants. They are the ones that are doing all the work um, outside the lens in San Diego Youth Symphony who um, will talk more about their programs and how they uh, work within Liberty School. They are the ones that do the heavy lifting. I just do the coordinating and make sure that the <laughs> Zoom link is set up, et cetera. So I'm so happy and thankful to have um, both of these organizations with me tonight. And I also want to give a huge um, shout out just to all the organizations um, of our tenant groups that we work with. Um, like I said, we have quite the variety. And from year to year, we have about 10 to 15 um, of our tenants that are teaching artists that are giving back to uh, the, the kids and going, um, you know, going above and beyond just to reach even sometimes beyond what their specialties are. But, um, but it is amazing to see how those kids connect and the relationships that are made and the skills that are then um, that come out of uh, out of Liberty School. So hopefully that gives you a little glimpse into uh, Liberty School. And with that, I now want to um, bring up uh, Brooke and Jana to talk about how they apply the arts um, with what they do with Outside the Lens. Awesome, thank you. So our programs at Outside the Lens are very hands-on. So when we're in person, um, like Kate mentioned, we've got you know DSLR cameras, iPads that students are using. If we're virtual, then we're utilizing um, what students have access to. So that might be their district Chromebook or um, another device that they have at home. And they're creating, they're creating films, they're creating photo essays, um, animations, other photography and digital media projects. Um, you know, we do a lot of arts integration, project-based learning, trying to really make it student-centered, um, looking at, you know, where the students are at, what their interests are and creating um, projects around that. And like Kate mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of it's really that exposure. They sometimes may have not ever touched a camera, um, but also exposing them to new careers that they may not have been aware of and, you know, teaching them the skills, example, for example, of how to compose a picture, but also through that, they're learning how to think critically, um, building their self-confidence, like Kate said, learning how to take risks, collaborating with each other, um, and all of that. And then, you know, and really sharing what's important to them, sharing their voice through what they're creating um, and finding ways that they can make an impact, whether they're creating change within themselves or their community, um, and then getting a chance to share their work. So whether that's, you know, at our gallery, at their school, um, but a chance to share work with others and um, talk about it. And I don't know, Jenna, if you have anything you wanna add. 
I feel like you covered everything so well. Um, yeah, no, you did a lovely job with that. I would only add that for me, something that's super exciting about being a teaching artist specifically with photography and digital media is what an accessible kind of format it is for students, especially younger students as well. And kind of like Brooke touched upon a big part of Outside the Lens is kind of building up student confidence. And um, because it's such a nice accessible art form, um, I've seen students be just so thrilled and excited when we come to their classrooms or after school programs and they learn something that looks so visually so impressive and so cool and they can share it with their friends or their family. Um, and it's something that's really easy to learn. Um, so I feel like Brooke covered it, but just as a little side note, I know it's something that I love being in this particular medium and working it outside the lens in particular because it is such an accessible art form. Yeah, and just to add to what you said, Jenna, about the accessibility too, I think that it's really accessible to all ages. So mm -hmm. even the little, little, little guys, you know, they can pick up an iPad and they can learn about, um, you know, how to compose a picture and, and learn about portraiture and, and learn those different aspects and have fun with it, just like our older students and just on a different level. So it's, that's exciting to be able to see that at the different ages too, I feel like. Definitely. Even just from like an, an educator's point of view, I, I'm very lucky that I get to work with lots of different age ranges, um, usually around third to fifth with um, Liberty schools, but I've worked with a bunch, a whole bunch, but um, it's really great just as an educator to have that kind of challenge of changing up your photography or digital media curriculum to suit different age ranges. I know like Brooke mentioned, we use a lot of interactivity with our curriculum design and lesson plans, and we'll use a lot of games with the younger students and lots of kind of um, just fun ways that, especially when we're in the Liberty, Liberty Station space, that they can be exploring that environment and um, just really being part of that space as well. So, Brooke, you summed it up beautifully, but they're my little added points. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Um, again, we are, are just so lucky to have you and um, love hearing, you know, just how, um, how you work with the kids. So we are now going to bring up uh, Michael and Kate to um, talk more about uh, how they um, apply the arts. So I'll let you two have um, a little bit of a conversation. I think Michael's going to start, um, and then um, and then Kate will kind of kind of take it over. You know, the thing I'm struck by that my comment to Brooke and Jana is, you know, that as we were talking about this, I was recognizing so many of the wonderful commonalities that we all have by working on the art, working in the arts and in arts education specifically and with children and that how we're all trying to reach a really diverse and broad age range of children because what we do is so accessible and it can be made accessible to children at any age and i think that that's such an incredible entry point for kids at the arts you know that that kids should never feel intimidated by the arts and that it's our responsibility in a lot of ways as contemporary arts organizations to have those entry points for, for all ages to be able to connect in. And the other thing too that made me smile was you were talking about how excited the kids get, you know, that you show up at their school or they come here to NTC and they're just so excited to get to do something. And it's the same thing. I mean, you walk into a classroom with a bunch of drums, uh, you wanna see a bunch of excited kids, I can definitely show you a room full of excited, <laughs> excited kids. Um, so just to give a brief, um, overview of what SDYS does because you know we see ourselves on the precipice of really changing as an arts organization because so much of the time people hear San Diego Youth Symphony and they imagine a group of kids sitting around in a room playing Beethoven and things like that and we recognize that we have to be much much more than that and do so much more in order to be to really be leaders in the community and be responsible members of the arts education community here in San Diego. So we do have our flagship program, which now is 75 years old. Uh, we were one of the initial youth arts programs that was established by San Diego Parks and Recreation in 1945, which includes our friends in the Casa del Prado over in Balboa Park, the uh, San Diego Civic Youth Ballet and the San Diego Junior Theater. Uh, we have 14 orchestras and bands. Uh, that range from absolute beginners, like I've never played an instrument before, all the way through to the pre-professional level. Uh, this year we have just shy of 600 students 
uh, who are enrolled in those 14 ensembles, ranging in age from age seven to 22. And again, in the spirit of making music accessible, uh, we have a scholarship program uh, that uh, makes music affordable and accessible to families. Uh, last, I don't have this year's numbers, but last year it was about 32% of our students in our program received either need-based or merit tuition scholarships to participate. And our scholarship help doesn't end there because the uh, instruments is a huge part of this. Like if kids don't have an instrument, then they can't participate in the program. So we have a, a large library of musical instruments that have been donated over the years. And we lend them to the students free of charge uh, throughout the whole school year for them to take home so that they can practice. And we provide free maintenance and supplies like strings or reeds or whatever uh, so, that, so that the kids can fully participate. And the goal is so that everybody succeeds in one way or another. Uh, in addition to those ensemble programs that we run in Balboa Park, we also have um, related programs for students who want to deepen their musical experience and their musical learning. So that includes things like chamber music playing in quartets, or it might be a music theory class, or my personal favorite, since I'm trained as a composer myself, is to introduce kids to creativity in music and to give them the tools to create their own music and maybe do things like write music for movies or for animation or things like that. Um, that's the kind of stuff that we love showing kids opportunities to do. We also do a lot of parent um, workshops and professional development for music educators. Uh, so that's one component of what we do. Our second component is to recognize that not every kid can make it to Balboa Park and that there are schools that have a history of having no arts programs. And so we go out into the community and do school-based after school and in school music projects. Uh, our most successful program is called the Opus Project. It's been in the Chula Vista Elementary School District now for the last 12 years. Uh, when we met uh, the folks down in Chula Vista, there were no arts programs in any of its 46 elementary schools. And through our work and the work of our partners and friends and colleagues around the city, uh, we now have music programs in 21 of those schools and full-time arts teachers in 37 of the 46 elementary schools. So that's a big accomplishment that we're, we're really proud of. And we're looking to expand that programming and do that work in other parts of San Diego as well. Uh, we have a large program in City Heights uh, that is on the precipice of moving into this direction as well. And we have smaller partnerships with schools throughout the city, North County, South County, East County. Um, so we're very excited to be able to kind of bring music out into the community and meet kids where they are, because it's not, not every kid can get to Balboa Park or can get a musical instrument. So it's really important to us to be able to, um, to do that. Uh, and then the last area of our program in the spirit of Cradle to College is the idea of introducing early childhood music programs. And so this is something that uh, this organization began, I've been here three years and uh, SDYS started early childhood programming about four, a uh, little over four years ago uh, with a program called Chimes. And uh, I am going to pass it over to my colleague and friend, Kate Battenfeld, to introduce you to the Chimes program and talk about what our strategy is for early childhood and how we connect that to the other programs that we do. So, oh, this will take, okay. it, take it away, Kate. <laughs> And I can at least show you. So this is just sort of typical of some of the activities that we do in the programs that I'll that I'll be talking about. But as you can see, um, chimes, which is childhood introduction to music education with smiles, and the smiles is, as you can see, a very big part of it too. Um, and it's for children ages zero to eight, which is our early childhood ages. Um, chimes specifically goes up to about age five, and then we're building a new program into that as well, music discovery for, for um, older children. Um, and yeah, so this is just showing some of the activities that we do. There's literacy built into it as well. There's scarf dancing, as you saw earlier, egg shakers, um, all kinds of different music activities. So that is my overview of, yes, and there's an egg shaker right there. <laughs> um, but so, so the reason for um, the implementation of CHIMES is because basically zero to eight is just a really um, important age in terms of brain development for children. Um, in terms of music development, children really are hard hardwired at birth to understand rhythm and tone. But as they get older, if those um, 
if those concepts are not reinforced through active music making experiences, then then those patterns, those those neural pathways actually start to kind of go away. So it's really important during those early ages to um, engage children in really um, um, involved and um, um, a variety of different musical activities. So things that really engage all of the senses, um, things that engage the, um, and strengthen our brain connections to form, form that basis for early learning. So um, our CHIMES program, we have a parent-child classes that meet in Balboa Park and at Liberty Station. Uh, we're running right now, I, we're up to eight classes, eight full classes, um, Wednesday through Saturday. So pretty much almost every day of the week. Um, and that's where parent and child come together. Um, we have a trained teacher that um, just does a very um, diverse group of songs and activities, um, dancing, large movement, singing, um, vocal warm ups, and just kind of being silly, but also really learning those, um, those first learning steps of tone and rhythm development, which is so important. Um, and also at the same time, the parents are really getting involved. Um, and so they're learning along with their child, but they're also building those parent-child bonds and strengthening those bonds, which is, which is really important as well. So it's just a great way for them to come together during the class and then take those activities home with them. And we really enforce it, um, reinforce the idea that to, to make music part of your daily life. Um, you know, it's not just that 45 minutes in class. Music is something that you can take to the grocery store and sing about the vegetables or when you're driving in the car and you need to entertain your screaming child in the back seat. I've been there for sure. <laughs> so, so music can really be ingrained in just pretty much everything that, that you do in your life. Um, and then we also have community partners um, and Liberty School. We're very happy that we have Liberty School as one of our partners. Um, and we also work with teen parents. Um, we're building programs um, with the library. Um, we're hopefully building some programs with unhoused families in San Diego as well. Uh, so we're really trying to reach out to all the community within San Diego and, and, the, and into North County regions as well. Um, and so other than that, you know, we are also expanding into um, working with older kids, which is how when, I, when we're talking about Liberty School, um, we're talking about kindergartners, first graders and second graders. And we're really excited to start working with, um, with those age groups too, because that really brings into, um, into play the next step, which is moving into ensemble programs within SDYS. Um, so, uh, it, you know, it's, it's just, it's delightful, it's joyful. And we, we you know, we, we, everyone, we, I know outside the lens, you were talking about how it brings smiles and just makes you feel good. And, and you know, that's, that's what it should be. That's what music and that's what the arts should be. So we're just delighted to do it every day. Abe, can you talk about the um, the speech and the connection between music and speech and language development and fine and gross motor and how part of the program is really about promoting school readiness? Sure. So, you know, all of the activities that we do, I mean, it's music, obviously, for music's sake, but at the same time, we're really building in those pathways to um, to pre-literacy and um, and fine and gross motor skills in terms of crossing the midline when we do certain activities, um, you know, singing on vocables, which is sort of ba-ba or made up words so that it really reinforces certain syllables that children are really beginning to understand. Um, sequencing, because it's really important, you know, in terms of reading and mathematical skills to understand those sequences. So you know, okay, now we do this part. Oh, now we're going to move into this part of the song. So um, A, B rhythms and things like that. So all of that, you know, I mean, and it's done so seamlessly. So it's not as if we're spelling it out per se. Um, it's, it's just woven into everything that we do. And, and it, it just integrates so smoothly and so beautifully and, and really makes it um, a, a really important part of 
of early learning and early childhood learning overall. Thank you, Kate, so much. It's so neat to, to hear from all of you and how it um, you know, goes um, through the ages. So hearing about how you guys start the little ones off. Um, and now I would like to um, hear Jana with Outside the Lens of how they do the college readiness um, and get the kids at kind of the other end of the spectrum. Awesome, thank you, Kate. But a little uh, side note that I love what you mentioned, Kate Battenfeld, about um, that it just inclusion of silliness. And I always think that's so important, especially when working with the younger kids. It's like a lot of power in being silly and having fun, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm very lucky, like I mentioned earlier, that I get to work with a huge uh, age range of students. And one of the areas of focus I have is working with that kind of eighth to 12th grade um age group um, we have maybe three programs that i can speak about briefly that really concentrate on college and careers readiness um, one is called youth council which is for local san diego um, students from a myriad of different schools um, different levels of experience with photography um, who are interested in potentially um, after high school um, either pursuing photography in college or as a career or maybe just having it as kind of like a lifelong passion that they take with them. Um, so we have guest speakers who'll come in and talk about um, their professional experience, you know, their whole career journey. Um, we do practical workshops with the students and um, we also do some social stuff too, because again, a big part of this is in terms of the college and careers readiness is developing those soft skills. So we're really trying to emphasize that teamwork uh, component, um, leadership skills, communication, things like that, kind of wrapping it in this bow of um, media arts. Uh, another program that we have is the Youth Tellers program, which is more of an international program. It's purely virtual. Um, we have students from all over, all over the world and also in San Diego. Um, and it's a youth um, platform, so like a digital platform. Um, and it's very much designed with the youth, by the youth, for the youth. And they do some really awesome uh, projects, social media campaigns and things like that. And again, really focusing on those soft skills that are very transferable to those college, college skills that you need once you're kind of going into that space. Um, and then a final program that I love that we've just started recently too is Leadership Through the Lens, which is a partnership with UCSD Extensions. So as well as it um, focusing on those soft skills that I've mentioned numerous times, but uh, that's so important, you know, like leadership and teamwork, communication, collaboration, things like that. Um, it actually um, benefits the students and that they will receive college credit once they complete the course. Um, so the aim of that program is, it's usually a six week program for each cohort and they develop a social change program that involves digital media in some way. So we had some students who wanted to work with um, animal shelters. So they put in a whole proposal of how that would work and how they would use photography to help further that cause. Um, so they're just three of our programs. Um, we also work with many high schools um, and high school age students where again, although we're focusing on digital media, photography, animation, things like that, we're always super aware of building up those kind of college readiness skills and soft skills, especially. Um, I think it's again, one of the be beauties of photography and I'm sure you have a similar experience with the music that you teach that um, it's such a great medium of, for putting in other things that are really important for young people to be learning about. I want to keep it short. I don't know if that's too long, too short, but let me know if there's anything else you want me to add. No, that was that was great, Jana. Um, and I do have um, in kind of moving forward now, if you want to talk, if the two of you would like to talk about um, the art integration and then um, get into kind of your specific um, project with Liberty School that we have some visuals for, and I do have those visuals. So, um, so just let me know when you want me to pull um, those up, but if you two would like to just kind of, kind of keep going. Yeah, sounds great. Um, I've been with Outside the Lens for many years um, and I've always seen arts integration piece as a real OTL outside the lens staple. Um, we do arts integration with 
many different schools, different programs. And I know that as an educator, that kind of collaboration with classroom teachers and with the student needs and their um, what they're studying in class at the moment is something that I really enjoy. Um, I think arts integration is, I think when you end up becoming an artist later in life, if that is something that you do, you can very much relate to being in school and being like, maths is just absolutely my least favorite thing ever. I can't comprehend these subjects at all. And I think that I feel very lucky that now I get to work in arts integration space where I can say, okay, maybe we're gonna learn about something that a lot of students aren't gonna maybe naturally take to. That's really tricky, very academic. How can we tie in something that's much more accessible, much more fun, you know, to make those subjects seem approachable? And I know that's something that I really appreciated as a young person and, and wanted more of as well. Um, don't know, Brooke, if I, you wanted to add anything else in general about outside the lens and arts integration? Um, no, I mean, I just, and I love, just like you, I think it's just really powerful to be able to, for students to be able to learn their core content through the arts. And so whether it's, you know, like right now with Liberty School, um, another one of our teaching artists, you know, students are learning multiplication and they're creating animation showing multiplication. So they're able to show their understanding through, in a different way. Um, and so it's just bringing more depth to their understanding of that. Um, you know, we've, you know, we've done it in economics, science, English language arts, math, you throw it at us, we figure it out. But um, sometimes it, it's a little bit of a challenge coming up with, you know, what those projects are. But I think it, like Jenna said, I think it just makes the curriculum sometimes for the students more accessible um, and more fun. Um, and then they're, they're learning two things in one and they don't even realize it. Um, so it's just a neat way for them, again, to be able to demonstrate and sh share their learning. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you wanna jump into the Liberty School and then- Yeah, sure. Um, I and just let me know when you want me to pull up the slide. Yeah, we could do that now, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I um, think the first year that I worked with Liberty School was maybe 2018. So I've been lucky enough to work both in person and virtually um, with the Liberty School program. Um, when we first started, or when I first started working with Liberty School, it was obviously in person. Um, and like Kate mentioned, it's such a great opportunity for to really be involved in the Liberty Station space. And I know the students are always so excited when they could come and explore the grounds. And we would do lots of activities that involved looking for different compositions within you know, the space outside of our office in Libby Station. What's on the screen now is one of our virtual programs that we did. Um, so this was last year and the, it's, uh, the arts integration piece was to do with science and the anatomy of plants. Um, so I know I had a bunch of fun just as an educator that I put together these kits of fresh flowers for the students that were delivered to their classroom. And then the students opened them on our uh, Zoom classroom meeting. And we learned a lot about um, uh, photographing still life. So flowers in this case, but also then the power of editing and how we could use that. And within those two digital media pieces, we were exploring the anatomy of the plant and um, the, their curriculum that they were doing in science at that time. So here are some examples of the work they created here. So they were doing diptychs, which is two photographs presented next to each other. And we were exploring um, flowers, still life, um, editing, and then their science curriculum with that too. We can jump to the next one. And while they're shifting it to the next one, um, I didn't realize, and then when you were saying tonight, Kate, that you know Liberty School started in 2007, I found out last night that we've been partnering with Liberty School since 2009, which I didn't realize it had been that oh, wow. long. Um, but yeah, and then it, the current programming, I think we've been doing since 2015, but we were part of it like way back when, prior to both of us. Um, Oh, so and cool. so, you know, and then through this program, just even in these last few years with partnering with Liberty Station, you know, there's been kind of um, shifts and growth, right? And how that program, because I think in the beginning we were just working with Dewey and now there's Dewey and Washington and Perkins. And um, so that's been exciting to see that shift. And there's also been, um, you know, more of that integration of the arts integration as part of that, um, which has been really 
neat to be a part of. Um, so yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Jenna. No, that's wonderful. You guys are one of our longstanding, um, you know, artists that that we're so thankful for, and you do such uh, an amazing job of um, just, you know, what you're gonna, what you're speaking about in terms of kind of final projects um, and that. And so it's so great just to have, um, you know, so many different viewpoints, and that's what makes the program just so exciting um, because each of our tenants and, and teaching artists, you know, bring something different, but having your history and knowledge and experience has been very valuable. Thank you. Um, these two projects that are up now are two projects from this year. So one is an ELA integration um, where students were learning how to do visual narratives um, along with their ELA curriculum. And so uh, along with learning how to compose a photo, they came up with um, how they wanted to visually tell a story about themselves. Um, and so they have their photo and then they wrote a little piece to go with it. And then the other one um, for another third grade class was looking at, they were looking at uh, or learning different landscapes. So then uh, we provided materials for them to then create their own landscapes. And then they, um, chose which vantage points they wanted to take their landscapes from and then did a little writing piece about that. And then typically at the end of our programs, we always um, you know, have the students exhibit and share their work in some way. And so um, you know, earlier on with Liberty School, when we were just with Dewey, um, you know, there, um, we would do an exhibit you know, at that school site. Um, and then um, now we, you know, with the more schools we um, do prints that the students um, still get to have and, and they get to share at the end of it. Um, and then with the shift to virtual, we've been doing where we create Google sites so that the students um, you know, still get to see and share their, their work, but just in a different way since we can't do it um, in person at this point. But then again, when we shift back, you know, the students get to have um, copies of their final project. Um, which I think is also important, you know, for them to, ha to have that in their hands, right, and to be able to see what they've created and to be able to share about that. Um, and then something that I was just thinking of earlier when somebody was talking, um, you know, has, oh, I know when Kate was talking about, you know, them, you know, just music's everywhere, right? And I think, you know, as photographers too, I think part of what they learn is really to be to observe the world around them, right? And thinking about what they notice. And so something I think that's always really neat to see with the students is just kind of that piece too of they're seeing things in a new way and kind of that different perspective or they're even just like noticing, you know, in their environment things around them that they may not have noticed. And then also another big piece of, I feel like of our programming is also that media, media literacy piece and really um, helping them to learn about the importance of being both a critical consumer and a critical producer of their media, right? And really um, and really building that digital and media literacy um, skills with the students. And, and again, at all ages. So that can be even with the little guys as well as the older students. Yeah, I agree that we definitely tend to build in that media literacy component in, in all the classes that we do. Um, we usually start off when we're approaching a new subject by doing some VTS or visual thinking strategies, you know, and just getting the students to look at an example image and, you know, come to their own conclusions about it by asking kind of follow up questions. Um, and I think that's something that we do with all ages again, you know, obviously we will, you know, uh, tailor it a little depending on the age. Um, and I think that really adds to the media literacy piece that we try and explore. Um, I think we could jump to the next slide. So here are two example images from when we were in person. Um, so those who are familiar with the Liberty Station space may recognize this image on the right, or even the one on the left, which has a double exposure of um, the fountains that are in so many of the different spaces in Liberty Station. Um, so it's very nostalgic to look back on these. It feels like a long time ago. Um, and if we jump just to this last slide, just so you can see a little example of like Brooke mentioned that presentation piece that we always do at the end of our programming. Um, this was an exhibition that we did. This is at Dewey, wasn't it Brooke, I think? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, this is an exhibition that we did at Dewey Elementary. So as you can see here, we have those prints down on the table and the students brought their families to come look at their work that they had um, uh, produced over the course of our weeks together. And there was lots of pride and happiness in the work they had created. Um, and you can see also they have their own little portfolios which they got to take home, which kind of described each of the projects that we covered and gave them their own image that they created with that. And then those prints actually went up in the school after, which was another way just to really celebrate the students too. I can finish that. Oh, I think you're on mute, Kate. I'm on mute. No, I'm not. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you guys so much. Again, I love how you guys conclude um, your sessions and I just know how much the kids get out of it and um, the teachers get out of it. And um, with that, just as we transition um, and we can bring um, San Diego Youth Symphony um, back up, I just want to read um, a quote from one of the um, teachers um, at, at Dewey about um, the effect of Liberty School. Every student has grown in self-confidence and in general appreciation of the sense of community. There is an enormous value to the shared experiences together with the variety of activities at Liberty Station. I have noticed that my students have become a tighter unit. They are nicer to each other and have a greater emotional maturity with their interpersonal communications. And that's from a teacher, Lynette uh, Gavin at Dewey, who has, um, I think she's been with us almost as long as, um, as we've been in existence, if not close. So that's just an example of um, kind of how the teachers see the effect of uh, Liberty School. So with that, um, Michael and Kate, please, um, please share with us your um, art integration and then um, your story of Liberty School. And give me just a second and I can pull up um, that, that photo we have um, from Liberty School. Well, sure. Uh, let's start with what our Liberty School, because we're still you know, relatively new to Liberty School. So I'd love for Kate to talk about her experience. You know, We've only been virtual with Liberty School so far and we're looking forward to coming back to in person, but let me let Kate talk about her experience as an instructor and what you know music classes brought to the kids in there, and then I can talk a little bit about what we hope to do going forward with things like arts integration and how that would figure into uh, Liberty School. Sure. So um, I was really excited to um, to do a session with Liberty School, um, our first session. Um, we're, we're currently doing another one that I'm not teaching, but I got to teach the first one um, with second graders from Washington Elementary. Um, and it was with, it was a great experience. It was all virtual, so I wasn't quite sure, you know, how this would go. How can we relate music um, in a virtual environment? Um, but it was, it was really successful. Um, the, the kids were all given um, instrument kits, which um, I think yes, Michael will demonstrate with a, the Chimes logo, um, which has rhythm sticks, um, egg shaker and a scarf. Um, and then, oh yeah, I think Kate actually did that. That's what they look like. That's what we handed out. Um, and then it has the song, but that's actually our current songbook for Sights and Sounds of the Season. So um, when I was doing them, we had a different songbook, but yeah, so that's that's what's handed out to all of them. Um, they were just so excited when they get those in the classroom, they just can't believe that they get to keep them too. <laughs> and so, um, so it was just delightful to sort of see, and you know, it was, it was just a six week session um, but the progression that I saw within those six weeks was was really pretty, pretty incredible. Um, these kids predominantly had had no music instruction at, up until that point. Um, so I was thinking, well, at, at what level should I really start this class? You know, they're second graders, but um, but they caught on very quickly. And I, I really tried hard to um, to work with the teacher to integrate whatever it was they were learning about. Um, it just so happened that they were learning, and Michael will laugh at this, but they were learning about bees. We were talking about bees earlier. Yeah. So they, they knew a lot about bees, so incorporated a lot of different songs into it. 
um, a lot of different rhythms using egg shakers and sticks to, to create the different sounds that bees might make. Um, and they really, um, they really wanted to learn a lot about the history of certain songs too. So we even spent time discussing historical context and things like that. Um, and, and I just wanted to share, so these are, um, I don't know if you can, but we probably can't see that, can you? No, darn. Well, what it was supposed to be is, yeah, can you see it? No. Um, so we have rhythm cards that are part of our songbooks. Um, and the rhythm cards show the, the, the rhythm of the note, but they also have the word above it. So for instance, scarecrow. And so the kids would not only be learning to reading the word scarecrow, but they're also learning the rhythm scarecrow, scarecrow. And they picked up on that so quickly. So we were, I was, you know, really, really pleased with that progress over the six weeks. And they, they, we were all sad when it, when it ended and they, you know, asked, when are you coming back? And um, so when we got to do another um, session, which we're currently doing right now, I was really happy. I unfortunately can't teach it so, but one of our great teaching artists for Chimes is teaching it this time around. And this is with kindergartners. And again, she's, she's getting that same great feedback um, it's particularly interesting how much you can do rhythm um, and movement within a virtual context too. So, you know, in all, I think it's, you know, yes, would we like to be in person? Absolutely. And we look forward to building even, even more um, into the classes once we can be together, physically be together in the classroom. But, but for now, um, Man, it's just, it's really, it's fun to see the, that um, progression over those weeks with the kids. And so it's, it's important to kind of remind that Chimes is really a program that's intended for ages zero to five, and that it is something that is normally done with the parents in the room. And so what we've done here is we've adapted the program to meet the needs of Liberty School and to have teachers kind of take the place of, you know, be their version of a caregiver uh, with the students in the class. And that, uh, and that's partially also inspires the program that most children would go out of Chimes and into if you're, if you're going to be part of San Diego Youth Symphony. And that's our music discovery program, which is actually a two year program for students to learn all of the elements of music and then spend several months being introduced to all the various instruments of the orchestra or the instrumental families of the orchestra. So then at age seven, roughly age seven, then children could then join their first ensemble and start playing as, as part of a group. But just as I said earlier about being able to really take programs out into schools, we want to adapt chimes so that we can light the imagination, you know, and get children to be interested in music. And the other pathway to that is arts integration. And this is a new area for uh, SDYS. It's not something that we've done a whole lot of in the past. I, I've done it uh, in my former role prior to being here. And Kate's also done it in her former role prior to being here. And so we both feel that this is a super important vehicle for children to be introduced to music and to use the school curriculum and this, you know, the learning standards to help children be exposed to music and hopefully then light the fire that would take them into a music discovery program or ultimately into an ensemble. And so music is difficult with arts integration. Um, it's, it's not as, uh, easily adaptable as some other art forms, but the types of things that we're looking at doing and that we're hoping to offer through Liberty Station would include things like building a musical instrument, but in the process, doing the history of San Diego, for example, and how you would use indigenous materials to build an instrument and through that learn the history of our region, whether it's a geological history or a cultural history of the region, or to do something like science and explore the scientific method and test the, like again, using instrument building, like how can you test hypotheses building different types of instruments? What's gonna be louder? How are things going to be affected by different playing techniques or size or all of these things? So those are the types of programs that Kate and I are working on now to develop that we hope to be able to offer to students when they come back in person uh, and participate here at Liberty School uh, from an arts integration perspective. And I see Kate has arrived, so that's that's my signal to stop talking. <laughs> well, I, I, just I also... Just, sorry, go ahead, Kate. Oh, no, I just was going to add, too, that, Jenna, you were talking earlier about soft skills and that that's just 
such an important part of, you know, I mean, the more you, when you talked about it, I was like, yes, you know, that because within all of the arts that those connections to, um, you know, getting along with other people and learning to share and um, just giving a sense of belonging to in, in within your community as well, um, things like that, that are just takeaways that that are just built in. And so I'm. thank you for mentioning that too. It's so cliche to say 21st century skills, but, yeah. that, but that employers want all these skills, but it is exactly what they're talking about. They want leadership. They want teamwork ability. They want collaboration, innovation. And that's what the arts teach at the end of the day. Both, both of our programs are you know, wonderful examples of how we're setting kids' imaginations on fire and setting them through a lifelong of artistic involvement and artistic learning. You guys have jumped right in um, in a pandemic to start working <laughs> with um, our program um, virtually, and you completely did a, a pivot and a wonderful job. So you guys are both just such wonderful organizations of, you know, outside the lens who's been with us forever um, and has, has and continues to do an amazing job. And then San Diego Youth Symphony, who you just jumped right in and the the reviews from the teachers and the students couldn't couldn't be higher so we are so happy that you were able to share your two experiences it's just two of our, our many tenants that participate we typically like i said have 10 to 15 tenants um, that participate and we serve about 600 kids a year so Little by little, um, we are trying to bring the arts um, to really students that, you know, just the environments they live in and or um, the opportunities that the school may even have um, don't, don't exist. So I want to thank you so much for spending this time with us. I'm going to share my screen as I set as I just um, have a few end remarks. These were the slides I intended to show at the beginning. Um, so these um, were just some photos that we got of working with some of our other um, our other tenant partners. This was with San Diego Craft Collective. They got to do a little shadow box um, project, and this oops, I'm going too fast. Come on, <laughs> this. Um, this was one of um, Karen Jones Fine Art um, that did with our really young kids um, where they did some paper mache um, art and then Monart School of Art. This was their take home kit um, where they go through a seri series of um, a specific technique that they have at their school. And then um, there's the, the shadow box as a final and then also San Diego Watercolor Society um, on the right. And that is just a few of our tenants. Um, we have all of our dance organizations um, that have participated and um, we have ceramics. We've been able to do animation. Um, there's just multiple um, avenues that have um, been brought to the students. And so I wanna just, again, thank everybody for um, providing uh, just their talents with us tonight, for participating uh, in our program, and you to the audience, just for hearing more about who we are and what we do. And I do wanna just remind you, we would love um, in the chat, um, if you'd like to hear more about what's happening at Arts District, um, we do a monthly newsletter. We also have our social media um, handles. We have a YouTube channel. So we will share this video um, out through those various um, channels. And everything that the NTC Foundation does is to support our tenants. So we try as, as, as best as we can with so many tenants um, just to share all the good things that they're doing. So please um, visit the libertystation.com website um, to see what events are happening and the list of wonderful tenants here um, in Liberty Station. And um, lastly, I know everybody's um, 
inboxes have probably been inundated today because of Giving Tuesday. Um, but I, I know that all of our organizations, um, you know, could, could use um, additional, you know, support during during these trying times. So we um, definitely have um, have uh, an email that went out today, and all of the proceeds from our Giving to uh, Giving Tuesday. Um, is going to this program with Liberty Schools. So we hope that you'll consider giving back um, to our organization or to any of the wonderful organizations that participated today. And with that, I just want to say good night. Thank you. And please come visit us during the holidays um, and see all the activity that we have going on here at Arts District. So thank you again, Outside the Lens and San Diego Symphony.